This will be the only video you'll ever need to master Canon's video autofocus system. I watched the full two hour presentation with Rudy Winston from Canon breaking down their autofocus system so you don't have to. So I'm gonna put on screen right now all the autofocus settings that is going to be covered in this video with timestamps so you can refer to them whenever you like. I'll be explaining these autofocus settings super simple with no fluff so that you really can understand how to use it and customize it to your liking. So with that all covered, let's get started. So grab your Canon camera, make sure it's in video, and let's open up the menu and head to the tab that says AF for autofocus. The first setting we're gonna cover here is Movie Servo AF. In here, you'll see two options, and the first one is actually enabling or disabling this effect. This setting simply controls whether the autofocus will be enabled whether you press the shutter or not. So if you want the autofocus to always be engaged whether or not you're holding the shutter, then you'll want to enable this. This is pretty much my default setting because I do like having the camera hunt for focus without me necessarily being there to press it like right now. Next we have subject detection AF. In here you're going to see two options, detect priority and detect only. So effectively what you're deciding here is whether the camera will hunt for focus, whether it detects a subject or not. In detect only mode, if a subject is detected and leaves frame, the camera won't hunt for focus and jump to the background. But if you were to have this in detect priority, even if you find a subject, but they leave the frame, the camera will then hunt for focus and probably lock onto the background. Typically in movies and our videos, we don't want the focus to automatically rack to the background. So I like to set this to detect only. Now let's head on to AF areas. Autofocus areas controls how much of your screen is gonna be used for autofocus detection. The first option here is spot AF. Spot AF will select the part of the screen that will be focused on and it is specifically a very small target. In fact, it is the smallest target you can choose on the Canon autofocus system. This is mainly useful when you need to have really precise focus on something that you want to select in the scene. Otherwise, I typically am not using this setting. Next, we have 1.8 AF. This is exactly the same as before, but the point is actually much larger as you can see in this example. Then we have expand AF and we have two versions one with five points and one with nine points. Expand AF is pretty much exactly like spot AF, except that there's a little bit of margin of error given to the autofocus area. In the first option with five points, it gives more latitude to directly above and to the side movement. And in expand AF area with the nine points, it has more leeway 360 degrees around the point you select. This is useful when you have a moving target in a designated area on your screen. Next, we have the flexible zone AFs. These come in a small, large horizontal, and a large vertical size. However, they're all completely customizable as I'll show you later. In this mode, the autofocus will prioritize the closest subject it detects in the zones that you choose. Subject, face, and eye detect all work in these modes as well. And all of these zones are customizable. Simply head back to the screen and we're gonna hit the Q button for the quick menu. Head over to our autofocus areas. Go to the flexible zones that we want to use and you'll see that you can hit set. Once you hit set, you will see you can adjust the width with the top wheel and the height with the back scroll wheel. And if you wanna reset to how it started, hit info. Now let's move on to subject to detect. Here we have five options. Auto, people, animals, vehicles, and none. In auto mode, the camera chooses between people, animals, and vehicles. Because the camera is having to do this computation internally, it can be slightly slower, but it has never really been an issue when I've used it. But if you want more precise results, it is definitely recommended to choose one of these subjects. People is simply that for people and will be more precise for face, eye, head, and body tracking. Animals actually includes dogs, cats, and birds officially, but it can work on other animals just as well. In vehicles mode, you can detect cars, motorcycles, dirt bikes, and planes. 
And here you'll see you have another option when you hit info, and that is spot detection. Spot detection tells the camera, should you focus on the rider that is driving the vehicle or the vehicle itself? So this is personal preference, but if you're doing some sort of like motorsport vehicle where you can actually see the, uh, the rider, the driver, then you may want to enable this. Then you have none. In this mode, the camera will choose the main subject based on the composition and what it thinks the subject is in the scene. Now we move on to eye detection. Here we have four options, none, auto, left, and right eye. In none, you're disabling the camera's ability to detect eyes, and instead we'll just simply track bodies or faces. Then you have left and right eye. In this case, it is the subject's eye that it's referring to. So the subject's left eye will probably be on your right side of your screen, while the right eye of your subject will be on the left side of your screen. Typically, I like to focus to the eye closest to the camera, but it really depends on the shooting scenario you're in. In auto mode, the camera simply locks onto the eye that it thinks is closest to camera, which usually works well for me. But when I am in some sort of interview setup like I am now, I like to choose the eye I focus on. Next, we have switching tracked subjects. This determines how easily tracking will switch from your initial subject. If you want the focus to stay on your initial subject, even if they move or if something comes between you and the subject, then you're gonna to want to set this to negative one. But if you want the autofocus to actually switch subjects more easily, then you can set this to zero or plus one. Next, let's go to Movo Survey AF Speed. This sets the speed of the autofocus system. You can have the camera have quick and snappy focus racks, or you can customize it and slow it down so that the focus actually slows down. For more cinematic gradual feel where I don't need quick snappy focus racks, I actually like to set this to negative one or negative two. But if you're actually tracking a faster subject, and especially if that subject is coming closer to camera or further from camera really rapidly, then you want to set this to zero up to plus two. I'll also set the autofocus speed to plus two when shooting in slow motion. And that's because when the footage is slowed down, I don't want the rack focus to take so long. So in that case, I actually prefer a faster speed. And then you have the option of when the autofocus should be active. Should it always be on whether you're recording or not? Or should the autofocus only kick in when you start recording a video? That is purely personal preference, but I like it as always on because it also gives me a chance to sort of test the autofocus even if I'm not recording a video. Next, we have Movie Servo AF Tracking Sensitivity. This is how sensitive the autofocus tracking is when your subject moves from the autofocus points, when another object enters the autofocus point in front of your subject, or when panning. So it is related to switching subject tracking, but in this case, you're determining how quickly it decides to do so. For example, if you want the focus to stay locked on on your initial subject, you're gonna to want to put this to negative one, negative two, or negative three. This is usually where I like to keep the setting since I don't want unintended subjects to get focused on. But if you do want the camera to switch focus very quickly, depending on the focus area or if something comes between you and the initial subject, then you're gonna to want to put this to plus one, plus two, or plus three. This is also really important when a subject is changing its distance from you very rapidly. In response to that, you may want to increase the spade of this setting. Next, we have lens drive when AF impossible. This one is fairly straightforward. Do you want the camera to hunt for focus even if it's unable to focus? Or do you want it to stop focusing once it realizes it has no way of focusing? This is mainly gonna be an issue in dark situations where your camera is unable to really identify what it's supposed to focus on. I like to have this off because I do not want the camera to be constantly hunting focus in those low light situations because that's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna drain the battery, and then two, it's just gonna be annoying to deal with and try to fix anyway. On this page, we can skip a few of the settings and just go to multi-controller sensitivity. This adjusts the multi-controller or joystick sensitivity when moving the autofocus areas. If you want to have more fine and precise 
movement of autofocus points using the control stick, then you're gonna to wanna to set this to negative one. If you're just trying to move the control stick a little more rapidly or get across the screen quicker, then you're gonna to want to set this to plus one. I like being able to move the focus area quickly, so I have this at plus one. Next, we have manual focus peaking settings. This feature is only available when you have your camera and lens set to manual focus. When this is activated, it's going to create a highlighted area in your frame over anything that is in focus. You can adjust the intensity of this effect here, and I like to have it high so I can really see what is being focused on. And then of course you can customize the color here. I find that in most situations red works really well, but depending on your scenario, you may want to choose a different color. On the same page, we now have focus guide. This is another feature that's only unlocked when you're shooting in manual focus. When enabled, a box will appear on your screen that you can move. When the box is placed over an object in the scene, you'll see arrows that'll indicate whether it's in focus or not. You'll know when it's in focus when all the arrows align and become highlighted green. This can be useful when you're using vintage lenses or lenses that don't have autofocus capabilities, but otherwise I don't really use this feature very often in videos. And there you have it. That's every single autofocus setting you need to know when shooting video on a Canon camera. Now that you have all the autofocus settings mastered on your camera, you're gonna wanna know the optimal video settings. Luckily, I have a video on just that that you can check out here. If you still have any questions about the autofocus settings on your Canon camera, leave them in the comment section down below. And if you want a breakdown of these settings for photography, let me know and I'll make that video. And thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. It really means a lot and I hope I was able to help you out. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.